Hey guys, Count CL Glenn with Bridging the Gap, where we talk about bridging the generational gap as well as the wealth gap. We literally take you step by step and tell you how to bridge that gap from where you are to where you want to be uh, from the aspect of a boomer, somebody that's been there, done that, and the exer. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell notification. We want to let you know as soon as we drop something, we want you guys to get it. We want you to be first. So make sure you do those two things for us and we can't wait to drop some more content. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching, welcome to Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Counselor Glenn. And I'm William V. Thompson. Hey guys, want to just do a quick reminder for you guys to like, share, right. and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. That's how you tell us we're doing a good job. When we see those numbers increase, when we see those downloads increase, we know we're doing something that's having an effect on the community. So please, please share this with your friends. If that's you it. haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like the channel. So we can continue to provide you with great content and know that what we're doing is effective. That's it. That's it, man. Yeah, we've had good responses, man. You guys have been very good about getting our numbers up, passing the word. So continue and keep up the good work. Excellent. Today we're on Lesson 22. That's it, man. We're going to talk about some low-hanging fruit in, in real estate investing. Again, that's your forte. Yes, sir. But I'm going to do it from really the non-real estate type dudes and things that Joe and I do. And then I think in lesson to a podcast 23, we'll talk, we'll start to get more into details with it. So again, whether you are a seasoned investor or just getting started, you're going to learn some things today as well as next week about real estate investing. Okay. So we're talking about creating money using room rentals. That's right? it. Okay. That's it. Talk That's to it. me about that. Well, you know, the great thing about it, so often I hear people talk about, I don't have good credit. Okay. I get that. I don't have any money, but I want to get involved in real estate. And I generally tell people, and you're going to do some more things next week on it. But I tell people one way to get your hands dirty or get involved in it is to look at finding a nice house, like a four bedroom, two bath, mm -hmm. and a few more particulars, and whereby you simply become the landlord over it. Somebody else owns the house, but you in turn are able to rent that house out. And instead of renting the whole house, you're renting rooms. So imagine having a four bedroom, two bath, and somebody else is responsible for all the repairs and the maintenance and the insurance and the upkeep, your job is to keep those four tenants in there, to keep them happy and satisfied, as well as collect the rent money. And then even on the flip side, Concel, with the room rents, you could do it with individuals. And something I'm looking at more and more now is even doing like a group home. Okay. It is just amazing the amount of money, of course, depending on the level of the uh, participants or the patients, whatever the term may be, that sometimes people are getting two to $4,000 a month per room. And of course, that's going to be a little more cumbersome because you're going to need to have a full-time staff person to watch them. So between renting the rooms out to individuals or a group home, those two together without you ever owning the house and with minimal risk, there could be some great cash flow going on there. Okay, so what are some of the keys, I guess, to look for when you're trying to find a, a house to rent? To basically sublet, in, that's, the, that's in it. essence, to individuals on a room-to-room -room basis. Yeah. Well, first of all, you make a very good point. You have to work with the owner of the house to make sure that subleasing is permitted. Right. And you know, and do give clear disclosure on what you want to do, how you're going to do it. Because for the most part, of course, the, the rental market is hot right now, mm -hmm. but it won't always be that way. And there'll be a lot of homes, I think, coming available, I think, in the months ahead and to be able to lock into a long-term contract with the landlord and they know that you're helping maybe an underserved population, guys and gals who maybe can't afford a full house, but they want to pay rent. Or a population of people who are need help via a group home. So I think if you find the right owner of the house, I think they'll be very open to you. Okay, so finding the right owner, that's probably one of the first keys. And disclosing what your intentions are. That is so true because I know even me personally, Joe and I own a property near one of the local universities here. It's a four two, ironically. And uh, we could get more rent money, but we sort of have reduced the rent because the gentleman is renting the four two from us. And what he is doing is he's finding guys that have come out of prison and or that have had substance abuse because that's where he came from. And he more or less ministered to them. And believe it or not, he makes probably about $500 a month positive cash flow from that. Wow. And because, you know, we've lowered the rent. But, again, it gives Joe and I 
a feeling to know that we're part of that ministry, we're part of that help. Mm -hmm. We could have probably doubled the rent, and but we've decided to cut it substantially so he can help people. And it's landlords out there that are open to doing that, and that's really what you're looking for. Yeah, one, one of the things landlords want is that monthly income. You got it, man. You got it. As long as you're paying the rent on time and, and they know you're going to take care of the place, most landlords shouldn't have a problem with you uh, renting the rooms out. You're right. And you made another good point. I am not a handy person, unlike you are. <laughs> but even finding someone, let's say like yourself, who's a handy person, who gives like a verbal commitment, I want to do some little things around your house. I'll make sure that we, we paint a room here and there, not a lot of work. I'll make sure that the landscaping is taken care of. So that person that's sort of a handy person willing to do a few extra things for my house, I like that because the, the normal rental, a renter, just simply says everything is yours. So I think that's another thing, Put, putting on the table not only that you're going to help other people, but you're willing to not repair the AC unit not to fix the roof, but some low-hanging fruit, the painting, maybe repairing the carpet, the doors, those kind of basic yeah, things. Yeah, you know, toilet's not working right. You there you go, it. man. You, know, you don't have to worry about getting a call at 9 o'clock at night about a toilet that won't flush. You said it well. Said gotcha. It well. Gotcha. And, and I want to say to people, I know when you hear it, you're thinking there's not a lot of money, but think about you didn't pay any money down, you didn't have to get a loan, you have bad credit, um, and you're not ready to begin to buy and now you have this four bedroom, two bath house that you're cash flowing anywhere between maybe four hundred and six hundred dollars a month. And what if you just simply did that once, then three times, then five times? That could be three thousand dollars a month as you begin to build up your confidence and your knowledge. Now to start owning things. Yeah, that's key, man. I mean, you you have no <laughs> very minimal risk. I love it. Um, not a lot of cash out of pocket and, and you're getting cash and experience. We'll say it. That's right. You, so you, you may down a line on a finance that house or something. So that's it. Yeah. Lots of potential. So you want to look for a landlord that's willing to allow you to be able to sublet. What's some other keys? I think the other thing is going to be uh, public transportation and shopping areas. A, a lot of people like this. Let's say if you're dealing with uh, used to word underserved population they may not have access to a car of their own. I know to some people that seems strange, but that's the reality to a lot of Americans. Mm -hmm. But if you're close to a, a bus station, or, I mean, not bus, but a bus stop, and mm -hmm. you're close to, uh, they can get food and all like that, that's a win-win. I mean, to many people, if the bus comes within a half a mile, that's a win for them. Or if a, a shopping facility is within, on that same bus line, I can stop, get my food back on the bus and be at home, so definitely consider public transportation, shopping areas, and if at all possible, even other um, events like maybe close to downtown. I know our house is within, <coughs> excuse me, about a mile and a half of downtown on a bus line. Right. So it, it's a win-win for those without transportation. They can get around the city. Yeah, try not to be in the hood if you can. <laughs> yeah, I got you're right, man. Yeah. You're right. But um, I, you you're absolutely correct. If, if transportation is an issue. You want to eliminate that by being close to public transportation. No doubt about it. And, and uh, close to shopping areas, grocery stores, things of that nature. So, Excellent point. Yeah. Is there anything else you need to look for outside of hey, a landlord that's flexible, mm -hmm. a house that's in a good area? Do you do you have to be a 4-2? Could it be a 3-1? It could be a 3-1, but I have just found, again, in the Greensboro area, that when you work the numbers, it just appears that a 4-2 gives you the ability to attract more people and to even do better with your rent. So 4-2 is preferred. And even I think yesterday, I'm not sure if you looked at it, I shot you the 5-2. And yeah. again, I mean, it's it's in a decent area in High Point. It appears to be. It's a brick house. It's a 5-2. It's less than $100,000. I'm not sure what the possibility may be, but those kinds of things work really good for room rentals and or a group home. I got you. Okay. Well, anything else we need to look for? I got two closing thoughts. I think the other thing is, Try to get the tenants to work together to create what I call a financial empowerment team. You know, you're learning all this great thing about money. And what if you said to them, maybe once a week or a few times a month, they allow you to come in and teach them the power of cash flow. Now, the reason why that's important is, one, you're going to teach them cash flow to make sure you get your rent on time. Mm -hmm. Second of all, you're going to put in their mindset that one day you could own your own place. So let me begin to help you with your credit and your cash flow, et cetera. And then third of all, it gives you a way to build a relationship with those that are in the home.
because there's something about when you like a person and you know them, I think they'll protect the property a little bit more. And I think when you do house number two or 22, they're going to tell you not only does Council rent houses, he keeps them up well, but he helps you with your personal finances, go to him. So I think that's something you definitely want to do is to see if you can get those tenants to create a financial empowerment team to help them help you. Yeah, I've never heard of that, um, just developing that relationship in that manner, but I can see how that can be very beneficial. Uh, I mean, if it comes between you know paying their rent and, and going out and you've helped them. <laughs> that's right, man. You know, they may lean towards the side of paying their rent because of what you've done for them. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that, yeah. And so right. last point you had? My final one is, and you know, and you may want you, you got four people there. You got four different personalities. I mean, think about it in your home. There are four people in your home. Yep. And you guys are family, but everybody don't always be thinking the same way, do they? No. And I got three, and that's the same thing in my house too. But imagine just having one person there. That let's say if you're charging 150 a week, arbitrary number in rent, uh, you may actually have that one person who makes sure that the house stays in order. They may collect the rent. They may make sure things are handled. And instead of charging them 150. You may give them a twenty-five a dollar per week discount, just to make sure that you don't have to come over in the middle of the night. That people are behaving themselves. There's no ruckus going on. So that's the final thing I would say: find that reliable person, give them rules and regulations, et cetera, and let them be the loving enforcer to keep order in your home. Got it. I want to break the numbers down real quick, if you don't okay. mind. Yeah. So, what would you charge? Let's say we got a four-two. What would we charge per room per week? Okay, I'm going to give you this example that we're doing now here. Uh, the gentleman that is doing renting out four to he's charging the one fifty a week. One fifty. So that's one fifty times four. What's that? That's six hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, times four. That's twenty four hundred dollars. Okay, we only charge him seven hundred dollars for the house. So that's twenty four minus seven so is down to seventeen. Utilities probably run about two hundred. So he covers utilities. He covers utilities. Okay. Okay. And then of course also he cuts the grass, which he does that personally, and he does throw in a bonus of cable TV. So when you do the numbers on our house, we're only making seven a month by choice. He's netting about a thousand dollars a month. And it's in a population of people that he wants to try to help too. Right. So the, that's the number on a deal that we're currently doing. As a matter of fact, he's in the process now, him and his wife, of buying the house. And you're going to talk about that some next week about owner financing. Right. And you'll learn more about that next week. But we decided that uh, market's good. We want to help him. And let's see, get the thing done. It sounds good. So he's bringing a grand a week. A grand, grand a month. month. Yeah. Okay. That's, doesn't even own the house. Exactly. And, and, and has no type of risk involved no, no very taxes, minimal risk no insurance that's wow that's it that's good stuff it is man it <laughs> is man well that wraps up episode number 22 um your host counsel glenn hey william v thompson we'll see you guys on the next one